Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Box on Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a boss flash on the old classic, which is the B450M mortar. Not the Max, or the Max 2, or the Titanium. This is just the mortar. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the MSI B450M mortar. This is a slightly older board now but it is still in demand. Seems to be they are still selling uh, this and the Max and other versions. There's the titanium version, the white version, etc. Reason why we're doing this is because uh, we've done a new build in this case, which is the EM1 woofer, which uh, if you're not sure, there'll be links for that in the video description as well. New case on the market, so you probably haven't seen a lot of these around and uh, yeah, it's a slightly unusual design, but anyway, I digress. The reason why we're doing this is a slightly more budget orientated PC, trying to kind of scoop up some of the bargains on the market at the moment. And one of those is the AMD Ryzen 5 4500, which is a cracking processor, around about 75 pounds here in the UK, and is kind of equivalent processing power to the Ryzen 5 3600, which even secondhand is probably more expensive. So for a brand new processor, and actually with a pretty decent performance level, it makes a lot of sense. But unfortunately, in order to get a decent price motherboard, such as the B450M mortar, then you may find you're gonna to need to do a BOSS update, which is lucky because this has a BOSS flashback button on it, which we're gonna go ahead and use today so we can take advantage of the new beta BIOS and get this processor up and running. So some things you're gonna need, a working PC and or laptop to go on the internet, go to the MSI site, download the BIOS. You also need the PC either assembled, you can do it assembled if you want to, ideally brand new board on the box, with a power supply, that is pretty much all you need. But if you've got your system built and you're wondering why it's not actually running, then yeah, this is an easier way of doing it. You'll also need a USB stick. So we're gonna use this one. This is our ScanDisk Flare. We use this all the time, it's a great little drive. 32 gigs, it has to be 32 gigs or less because you do need to format the drive in the FAT32 format. So with that out of the way, I think that is pretty much it. Let's go over to the PC and get the new BIOS. Okay, so this is our desktop on the working PC. So we're gonna go ahead now and try and get hold of the BIOS. So we wanna to go to the MSI website. So we'll go B450M mortar. And make sure when you do this, you do pick up the right version. There is a mortar max and titanium, etc. like I said. So there's the titanium, for example. Make sure it is the mortar. Obviously, if you're using the mortar max, the same thing applies. Just make sure you, you get the right particular version for your motherboard, or otherwise it basically won't work and you'll be wondering why. So make sure that is the right one. Do a quick visual, make sure that it is the same board. Head over to the support section. If you're not entirely sure why your processor isn't working, you can head over to the compatibility tab and see what BIOS your particular processor needs. Ours is a Ryzen 5 4500, which fortunately is on the bottom here. And this will work with version 1i or above. There is also a beta BIOS available, but uh, you can't download it from their site at the moment. You do have to request it from MSI. So the version we need is 1i. I think we're probably on the one just slightly before that. So let's go back up to the top here. And we'll go to drivers and downloads, go to BIOS. And there we can see there is the latest version. And I think we're probably on this one, 1e, which is why it's not working. It's a pretty new BIOS, but not quite new enough. So what we want to do is click on download and we'll save this to our desktop for ease of use. So just click on save. And now we can minimize this window. We don't need this anymore. And we can unzip the BIOS. So right click, choose extract all, and we'll save it to the same location. And you can either open the folder or it'll open itself. Take a look inside and there'll be a text document which give you information about the BIOS, etc. And also you've got the BIOS file itself here. Now something you do need to make sure is that you've got hidden file extensions enabled. If you're not too sure, click on the three dots at the top and go to options and then view and then show hidden files, folders and drives. So you do want to have that enabled and also, and you can also, if you want to disable this bit here, hide extensions from known file types, entirely up to you. So click apply. And what we want to do now is to rename this file. So in order for the MSI flash to actually work, you need to call the file msi.rom and then delete the rest of the extension. When you're happy, press enter. And it'll say, if you change a file name, it may come unusable, blah, blah, blah. Are you sure we want to change it? Yes, we are. And there we go. So that is our file. 
This is a slightly smaller one than usual. We're used to seeing 32 megabyte files or 32,776 kilobits. So this is now 1638. It's a slightly smaller boss on this particular motherboard. So that is ready. Now we need to get our USB stick ready. So we're going to plug that in. And now we can go to our USB drive. There is actually a file on there. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And you can also, it is prudent to make sure the drive is formatted correctly. So it needs to be FAT32. You can leave the allocation size however you want to. Make sure if there's anything in the volume label, like such as a drive or something, make sure that that is empty. That can cause problems with the MSI system for some reason, not entirely sure why, but it does. So when you're happy, obviously this is gonna erase the drive in its entirety when you click on format. So make sure that um, you're okay with that. Once you are, click on start. You will get a secondary notice saying warning that formatting will erase all data, etc. Click OK to continue. And there we go, that is the drive formatted. So we can close that down now. And we can go back into our folder where we've got our BIOS. And we can right click on it, choose copy. Then we can go to our USB drive and right click and choose paste. And there we go, there is our ROM file on the drive. So now we can close that, eject the drive and head over back to the computer. So now we've got our USB drive with our BIOS file on. Here's our PC. I've disconnected everything other than the mains power cord, which is at the bottom. So you can do that if you want to, it's entirely up to you. I find that the more things you can take out of the equation, the better. You can as well, if you want to, remove the RAM sticks, not entirely necessary, but it may be helpful. Now the next thing to do is to actually work out where on the motherboard is the actual BIOS flash port and also the BIOS flashback button. You've probably found these already, but let's point them out for you anyway. So as you can see on the back here, so at the top, we've got our BIOS flashback button, which is slightly recessed. And handily, just below that, with the white outline around here, this is our BIOS flashback port, and it does say BIOS on there. So we're gonna grab our USB stick and put it in there, and turn on the power of the power supply if it's not on already. And what you wanna do is probably find something to actually push the button in. I'm gonna grab a small screwdriver and just push the button in for the count of approximately three seconds. So one, two, three, and then release. And you should find a few seconds later that the PC will spring into life and all your fans and stuff will probably light up and you'll possibly see your CPU LED come on on the actual motherboard itself. There is a very small flashing LED in that corner there. If I turn the PC around just ever so slightly, you might be able to see that a little bit easier. And what we're looking for is for the LED to continue flashing at the same speed for a little while. This is kind of initializing the BIOS flash system, reading the file and all that kind of stuff. The key part is when the BIOS LED starts flashing a different speed, which means that the process is actually working. If you've gotten to this point and you find that this LED up here has flashed maybe three times and then stopped, you've basically got a drive that the system cannot detect or you have the incorrect BIOS file. So again, make sure that you are using the right BIOS, you've unzipped the drive fully, you've renamed it to msi.rom and that is kind of it really. It, there's not really a great deal you can do wrong. Sometimes I find using either WinRAR or 7-zip can cause some weird things to happen to the BIOSes not being extracted properly. So if at all possible, use the Windows extraction tool to do it. I find that works extremely well. I've never had the need for any third-party software and you should find that much better. Like I said, the drive, or the, sorry, the LED rather, is flashing faster now as you can just about make out. I'll keep trying to give you a view of the side of the case as well so you can see the LED. It's actually in the top corner of the motherboard. So what you want to do now is just to be patient and wait for it to do its thing. You should find at the very end, the system will basically shut down and try to reboot itself. And the BIOS LED has just gone off and the rest of the PC is switched off. And now it's come back on again. And hopefully if I can just about see the LEDs, yeah, you can see there's the CPU LED or is that the boot one? It's probably gonna be trying to retrain RAM. But basically you should find that the system is uh, pretty much gonna work now after retraining, recognizing the processor, etc. It'll probably go into the BIOS page so you can go in and do settings, but this should be absolutely fine. So at which point you can 
probably turn the PC back off. The BIOS LED is, light is off. Looks like we're still trying to do some training there of the system. And looks like the light has gone off now. So yeah, the system appears to be working at this point. Plug in your HDMI port if you want to. Plug in keyboard and mouse if they're USB. And you should find that system has a display, which is uh, absolutely awesome. So there we go. That is how to flash the boss on your MSI B450M mortar. Not the Mortar Max, not the Titanium. Make sure you get the right boss for the right motherboard. That is the thing these days. There's so many motherboards with very similar names. So do make sure 100% that you are using the correct boss for your motherboard and not just one which sounds or looks similar. Anyway, that's enough rabbiting on. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. Is. Smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit the subscribe button and the channel notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Oh, and if you're still having problems, join our Discord. Thanks for watching.